So, is the presentation visible to you? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. So, yesterday we discussed about the nearly free electron model in which we saw that when we have a weak potential introduced by the positive ion course, then the electron dispersion relation, that is the relation between energy and wave vector would get modified and we will get the energy band gaps, uh, energy gaps or the forbidden gaps at the zone boundary. So uh, we also saw that the electron, will, electron wave function will also get modified from the plane wave for a free electron to a different kind of wave function that was proposed by Felix Bloch in 1928 through a theorem known as Bloch's theorem. So if we have any electron in a periodic potential and at an instant the electron is at position R and its wave vector is given as k so its wave function would be equal to psi k r is equal to u k r exponential e to the power exponential to the power iota k dot r so this e to the power i k dot r it represents a plane wave that uh, spans the whole space and it is multiplied by this function which is periodic or which has the periodicity of the lattice in such a way that if we are look if we are at position r and this is the value of this function uk at position r then if we translate by uh, by a lattice translation vector t then we will get the same function so this is the meaning of periodicity so t you know that in terms of the primitive basis vectors a b c it could it could be given by n a plus m b plus uh, o c 3 where n m o are three integers you can take p q r integers or in place of a b c you can take a 1 a 2 a 3 so such is the translation vector in three dimensions so this means that this function remains invariant under under a translation operation our lattice is periodic and we will see that this periodicity will also be reflected in uh, in the in the wave function of the electron as well as its energy so the statement of block theorem is that the eigen functions of the wave equation for a periodic potential are are the product of a plane wave which is given by e to the power iota k dot r and it is modulated by a periodic function u k r having the periodicity of the of, of the lattice a one electron wave function of the form given by this equation psi k r is equal to u k r e to the power i k dot r is known as block function or block wave function and it can be decomposed into a sum of traveling waves later we would see that because uh, our lattice is periodic and we have a function that is also periodic in uh, periodic in uh, in nature therefore our wave function can also be expressed in terms of the fourier series that's why we are saying it uh, that any such function can be decomposed into a sum of traveling waves and different block functions can be assembled into wave packets to represent electrons that propagate freely through the potential field of the ion cores now we would like to prove we would like to prove this block theorem and first we provide a restricted proof of block theorem which means that 
it will be applicable to psi k which is non-degenerate this means that no other electron will have the same function inside the solid so this is this is a non-degenerate function after after proving it we will prove it for a general case that would be applicable to degenerate wave functions as well so for uh, for the proof of Bloch's theorem, we consider n identical lattice points on a ring of length n a. So these are n identical particles which are placed on on a ring, and the separation between the two neighboring lattice points is given by a. Therefore, the length of the ring is n a. The potential energy is periodic. Uh, periodic in A with whatever is the potential energy at position X, we find the same potential energy at every lattice point. Therefore, this condition would be satisfied Ux is equal to Ux plus Xa. All the particles are identical. Therefore, whatever is the electronic uh, distribution or the charge distribution this ion has the same would be find here therefore if we find the uh, the charge probability density that should be same everywhere so this means that mod psi x square should be equal to mod psi x plus a square or mod psi x plus s a square where s is an integer and uh, you know that uh, so since the probability is same therefore whatever is the wave function here the the wave function the same wave function should be there only the wave function between the two neighboring lattice points can differ by a constant c only it can differ by a constant c therefore we say that the wave function at psi x plus a is equal to some constant times the wave function at wave function at position x at position x that is only the difference of a constant otherwise because the probability density is probability density is same therefore the wave function at two positions are same because we have identical particles on this ring now the wave function at psi x plus 2a will be related to this to this wave function psi x plus a through this constant and we can write it in terms of psi x so psi x plus 2a would be equal to c square sir. c square psi x yes sir uh, we are taking a ring like structure here uh, uh, only x coordinate is enough to describe the position or location of the particle or x position it is one dimensional case but we have a ring like structure in the figure so what ring like structure we have because uh, be because we want to apply the periodic boundary condition so what what we want is that uh, if we have a ring like structure if we do a complete uh, if we make a complete circle then we will reach at the same point so at the end after uh, traveling any distance we will be at the same point therefore we will compare and uh, uh, wave function after traveling a complete ring would be would be the same as it was before the starting and we will apply the periodic boundary condition which are known as born one Karman boundary condition and we will see that this wave vector cannot have any arbitrary value it will be restricted it will be quantized so kx will be quantized ky will be quantized and kz would be quantized this exercise we have already done so nothing new in it when we discuss the Sommerfeld quantum field electron theory in which we drive the Fermi energy and so many terms there, so we have already used it. So, uh, 
accordingly after traveling this distance n plus a we are at the same point we are at the same point so therefore psi x plus n a in terms of c would be equal to c to the power n dot psi x but this would this should be equal to whatever is the wave function before we start our journey of one complete revolution therefore uh, here c to the power n would be should be equal to 1 and c must be one of the nth roots of 1 we can write c equal to nth root of 1 and e can be expressed in terms 1 can be expressed in terms of e to the power i 2 pi s because 2 pi s it is you know, if you expand it e to the power i and some 2 pi s it will be cos 2 pi s plus iota sine 2 pi s and whenever you have anything for cos 2 pi something so it would always give 1 and sine 2 pi of something would always give you 0 therefore 1 can be written as uh, e to the power i 2 pi s where s is from 0 to n minus 1 so c could be written as e to the power i 2 pi s upon upon capital n therefore psi x plus a can be written in terms of psi x times e to the power i 2 pi s upon n this condition this condition will be satisfied this condition will be satisfied if the if our wave function is a block block function that is psi x is equal to uh, ukx e to the power i i 2 pi s into x upon n a or we can write it ukx e to the power i x so this condition would be satisfied if psi x is a block function and we will prove it here ukx it is the modulating factor or modulating function which has the periodicity of the the lattice or the ring uh, so for uh, if it is so then we we have to prove this so we write psi x plus a is equal to psi x plus a is equal to u x plus a e to the power 2 pi s and in place of x we write x plus a divided by n a which can be expanded as because u x plus a is equal to u k x so we have written here u k x times we can separate the two sums in the exponential so one would be e to the power iota 2 pi s x upon n a and the second term is e to the power iota 2 pi s upon n and uh, what is this This is nothing but psi x. This is nothing but psi x from this equation inside the red rectangle. So we can write psi x plus a is equal to psi x e to the power 2 pi s upon n. And this is the same condition. So this condition would be satisfied if psi x is a block function. This is the proof of block theorem for one dimensional case. Similarly, we can expand it for the three dimensional case we will get this equation that uh, a wave function with wave vector k and po at position r should be equal to a modulating function which has the periodicity of the lattice uk at position r times a plane wave given by e to the power iota k dot r now if we translate this wave function by a translation vector so the new wave function should be psi k r plus t is equal to u k r plus t e to the power iota k dot r plus t and uh, since it is a periodic function so it should be equal to u k r and e to the power i k dot r times e to the power iota k dot t what is this this is psi k r therefore psi k r plus t is equal to e to the power i k dot t psi k r and this is also another way of telling 
another way of telling the Bloch's theorem that if we have any wave function, we translate it by translation vector, it should be of the form of e to the power i k dot t psi k r. This means that the wave function also wave function also has the periodicity of the underlying lattice and the wave function can also be expanded in terms of a Fourier series as we will see shortly. The probability density for finding an electron within one unit cell it may vary depending upon the position but it is identical for the corresponding positions within every unit cell in a solid so this is the meaning of meaning of a function having periodicity you consider one unit cell or you consider one one uh, rectangle well which we discussed yesterday and you consider the wave function or you for example you consider one dimensional box depending upon n depending upon n the energy is different and the wave function is different can you recall it from the quantum mechanics you consider one dimensional box and you see what, how how much is e1 how much is e2 everything is different and the wave function is also different depending upon n so here also yes, here also we are saying that within one unit cell depending upon the position of the electron the probability density of finding the electron would be different but if we compare the same position in every rectangular well uh, of a of in the in, in the arrangement of a period in the arrangement of a uh, ions so we will find the same probability density at the same position in every every unit cell so this is the meaning of this statement so this means that the electrons travel through the crystal without bouncing into the lattice ions at all if you recall the drew theory drew theory considered that when we calculated the the mean free path the the distance traveled by by, by the electron uh, in two successive collisions in between two successive collisions it was it was coming out to be 1 to 10 angstrom and that was the roughly uh, lattice constant for any metal and it was concluded at that time that the electrons bounce from the positive ion cores but here we are saying that electrons travel through the crystal without bouncing into the lattice ions at all and it explains the possibility of a very long mean free path much larger than the distance between the ions which was if you remember experiments have proved that electrons have very large mean free path and it uh, the pure the purer is the solid or material the larger would be the mean mean free path and for very certain for certain type of very pure solids the mean free path was found to be of the order of centimeters so this is how our uh, this is how our, uh, uh, our our block function look like the dashed line the dashed line it represents a uh, a traveling wave or a plane wave e to the power i k dot r and this uh, function represented by the solid line it shows it shows the modulating function u k r therefore the, the, the total wave function is the multiplication of two the traveling wave times the modulating function u k r so this is how the block function look like so now we will prove blo uh, block wave function in a more general way which can be applicable to 
to the degenerate wave functions also means if the if many electrons are having the same same wave function under that circumstances also this proof will be valid and uh, for that we again do the um, or repeat things which we have already done we take a cube uh, crystal of side length n and we apply born worn karman periodic boundary conditions and this means that we join the opposite face opposite faces of the cube front face is joined with the back face left side face is joined with the uh, right side face upper face is joined with the bottom face so under such circumstances the wave vector will be quantized it will have three components in three dimensional given by kx ky and kz and it would be equal to kx ky kz would be quantized in terms of 2 pi nx upon l 2 pi ny upon l 2 pi ng upon l where nx ny ng are integers and uh, if we if we try to solve if we try to put our if we try to solve a Schrodinger wave equation for such block electrons now the, the electrons are known as block electrons because they uh, they have the block wave functions their motion is governed by the block wave function so these electrons are known as block electrons so if we solve Schrodinger equation for such block electrons and the Schrodinger equation is consistent with the periodic boundary conditions means the k is quantized so our wave function can also be written as psi r is equal to summation over k c k to the power i k dot r it is nothing but a Fourier series expansion i have said in the starting of the lecture that since our lattice is periodic in nature therefore uh, the wave function and other things will also be periodic in nature periodic in nature therefore and we have any periodic function it can be expressed in terms of the Fourier series expansion so here we have expressed our wave function as summation k ck to the power i k dot r where ck are the Fourier coefficients which also normalizes which also normalize this wave function psi r so far so good so now we consider we consider the potential energy potential energy of the interaction between the electron and the positive ion force since the ions are periodic uh, arranged in a periodic fashion therefore the potential energy is also periodic in nature and it can again be expressed in terms of a Fourier series so u r should be equal to summation g u g e to the power i g dot r why we are doing this exercise because we have to we have to put these proper these values in the Schrodinger equation if you remember Schrodinger equation d d2 d2 psi upon dx square and uh, at minus h cross square by 2m this is the kinetic energy term plus we have potential energy v r psi r is equal to e psi so in order to solve the Schrodinger equation we need the value for wave function we need the value for potential energy so wave function is expressed by this Fourier series expansion and the potential energy is expressed by this and potential energy is real and the real it means that the complex conjugate of this ug should be equal to u minus g as we have seen it yesterday for the potential now we substitute we substitute the value of uh, wave function and potential energy in the Schrodinger equation so which, which is as follows minus h cross square by 2m del square psi r plus u r psi r is equal to e psi r 
from this the kinetic energy term after substituting the value of wave function is minus h cross square by 2m del square summation over k ck e to the power i k dot r and uh, when we when we apply this del this laplacian or the this del operator so this uh, e to the power i k r it will be differentiated twice we have i square terms here so minus and i square minus minus will become plus we will have summation over k h cross square k square by 2m c k e to the power i k dot r this is the kinetic energy term and remember because i need to tell you something later here it is e to the power i k dot r we will try to we will try to get the potential energy terms also in the form of a uh, in the form of e i k dot r here we have potential energy term as well as the um, wave function term so that we do that we multiply the two periodic function summation over g u g e to the power i g dot r multiplied by summation over k c k e to the power i k dot r which can be written as a summation over k and g u g c k e to the power i g plus k dot r or k plus g dot r now here this exponential function is having e to the power i k plus g dot r and the put the uh, kinetic energy term is having exponential e to the power i k dot r in order to do the in order to do the matching what we do we write we write the sum of k plus g by another wave vector k prime so now if we do so if we in, in place of k plus g the vector sum of k plus g is replaced by k prime vector so it the potential energy term would be summation over k prime g u g c k prime minus g e to the power i Ita k dot r. Now you see the potential energy term and the kinetic energy term. They are having the same kind of exponential. And again, we can replace this k prime. We can replace this k prime by k in order to have the same k. So this is what what is written here. Uh, first, we have done. we are allowed to shift the indices by reciprocal lattice vectors as we wish since the sum in the question extends over all wave vectors consistent with the boundary conditions now if we rename the index k prime in the potential energy term back to k we can write the whole schrodinger equation in the new form now we will have e to the power i k dot r in the kinetic energy term we will have e to the power i k dot r in the potential energy term and e to the power i k dot r term will be on the right hand side which we bring on the left hand side so the schrodinger equation would become summation over k e to the power i k dot r inside the bracket h cross square k h cross square k square by 2m minus e c k plus summation over g u g c k minus g is equal to zero. Is this mathematics clear to you? Yes, sir. Okay. Only one reply. So, if still you have any confusion, you can go through the seventh chapter of. Uh, kittel's book that is on energy bands whatever we are discussing during this week that comes from the seventh chapter of uh, kittel's book so what is this equation e to the power i k dot r is a plane wave it e to the power i k dot r is a plane wave and it extends it uh, it spans the whole space it has 
spans the whole space. Therefore, it cannot be equal to zero. And the right hand side of this equation is equal to zero e to the power i k dot r. It represents a plane wave which cannot be equal to zero. Therefore, the term inside the bracket has to be zero in order to satisfy this equation. So we write h cross square k square by 2m minus e c k plus summation over g u g c k minus g is equal to zero. This is known as the central equation and it is the Schrodinger equation in reciprocal space or momentum space. It is nothing but a Schrodinger equation in a reciprocal space or momentum space. Now, if we look at the potential energy term, it has summation over G. So G means it uh, uh, it it is it is summation over reciprocal lattice vectors, and we can have infinite number of reciprocal lattice vectors. So this means that this equation will have uh, th this equation will can be expanded into if we take if we take infinite infinite number of reciprocal lattice vectors so we can uh, we can expand this equation into infinite number of equations so this is not going to help okay how we can solve infinite number of equations because summation it is summation over g summation over uh, g means from minus infinity to plus infinity but the thing is that now you try to understand here we have coefficient ck and in the potential energy term we have coefficient ck minus g and the solution of this equation comes from this fact that we have here coefficient ck and here we have coefficient ck minus g therefore uh, only those ck coefficients are important which are coupled to another ck coefficient which are having a wave, wave which are shifted by a wave which are shift whose k value is shifted by a reciprocal lattice vector g therefore ck where it is written ck can couple with ck plus g ck minus g other values would be other values would be zero this is mathematical mathematical statement and uh, if you recall or if i share in place of this i need to share yesterday's lecture so that it uh, would be clear for you So you see this picture, you see this diagram this is a periodic uh, uh, periodic in, in, in this is uh, plotted in the periodic zone boundary so you can see the central curve for a free electron see uh, uh, represented by a blue line it is coupled with either the k value which has different which is uh, k plus g or it is coupled with coupled with uh, this curve which is having k value given by k minus g so this is what i mean to say when we say ck and ck minus g are coupled this means that he will be coupled with k plus g or k minus g if we have ck ck plus g ck plus g would be coupled with ck plus 2g or ck if we have ck2 plus g that would be coupled with ck3 plus g and ck plus g i hope it is clear is it okay
So now how many k how many k's we can have in a uh, in one uh, in one Berlin zone we can have k value equal to the number of unit cells the number of unit cells so number of unit cell is capital n therefore in one in first in any Berlin zone in first Berlin zone we will have we will have k that would be equal to capital N. Therefore, in place of infinite equations, we will we can have only n equations because here k k is one particular value. In one Bernoulli zone, we will have n k such values. Therefore, we will have n such equations. We can have n such equations in place of infinite equations. So this is what is written. The original problem thus separates into n problems and is equal to the number of unit cells, each corresponding to a k, ve k vector in the unit cell of the reciprocal lattice. Each of the n systems of equations yields a solution that can be represented as a superposition of plane waves whose wave vector k differ only by a reciprocal lattice vector. If you go through the chapter, uh, seventh chapter of Beetle's book, then you would notice that this equation has been solved for for five five reciprocal lattice values: minus two g, minus g, and then zero g and plus two g. So for five values, this this equation has been solved there. So if it is so, if it is so, the eigen values, eigen values e of the Schrodinger equation can thus be indexed according to according to this uh, index means we will write k here because we have different k's so energy can be written as to which k it represents therefore we will have k. And not only then, not only k, we will have also index, uh, index of the band. So we can write it in e n k. If you recall the yesterday's lecture, I showed you some mathematical numbers one day when we plotted the e k diagram in the reduced zone scheme. One, two, and I told you these represents the band. These represents the band. Therefore, the k value may be same in different bands in the reduced zone scheme therefore we ne need to provide but they their energy may be same therefore we need to provide that for what k value this energy lies in which band so we can write it e n k n could be one n could be two n could be three like that will represent the band so in many books in place of E k you will you will see that E n k is written so n represents the band in what particular band we are talking about. So the wave function belonging to E k is psi k of R summation g c k minus g e to the power iota k minus g dot R and uh, if we take e to the power i iota k dot r as common inside the bracket we will have summation g c k minus g e to the power minus iota g dot r it is nothing but the term inside the bracket is again periodic which can be written as u k r e to the power i k dot r and it is nothing but again the statement uh, uh, it is nothing but again the block function so this way we have proved again the Bloch theorem which is valid for um, degenerate uh, wave functions also.
from this proof we immediately obtain another another important property of the block functions if we take this equation 12 of the wave function and shift k by an arbitrary reciprocal lattice vector z prime we get psi k plus g prime at position r is equal to summation g c k minus g plus g prime e to the power iota k minus g plus g prime dot r which can be written because the difference of the two reciprocal lattice vector is also a reciprocal lattice vector so therefore the difference of g and g prime can be expressed as summation over g double prime c k minus g double prime e to the power iota k minus g double prime dot r and it is the same equation it is the same equation as we are having this equation therefore what we can write is that psi k plus g if we have a wave function a wave function corresponding to a wave vector k we translate it uh, the k value by a reciprocal lattice vector g prime the two wave function will be the same and this again gives if we substitute this we we will get that if we have any wave vector k and that is translated by another uh, by a reciprocal lattice vector g the two energies would be same and you can verify it if you have a wave function or electron at the at the zone boundary first zone boundary their k would be equal to how much k would be equal to if you have an electron at the zone boundary first below zone boundary its wave function would be plus pi over a if we translate it by a reciprocal lattice vector that is given as minus 2 minus 2 pi a so pi over a minus 2 pi over a will give us minus pi over a we will reach from the right hand side of the Villanova zone boundary to the left hand side but the energy is same but the energy is same so this way you can understand this equation so in the starting of the lecture I told you that if our underlying lattice is periodic in nature the, that thing would also be reflected in uh, uh, reflected in wave function as well as in energy the periodicity of the potential energy in real space translates into a periodicity of the solutions in reciprocal space Amara jo lattice hai, that is periodic in real space but we see that that periodicity gets translated into the reciprocal space because we have seen e k is equal to e k plus g prime where g g prime could be 2 pi over a 2 rather n 2 pi over a in a general sense so if we have energy corresponding to wave vector k we translate it by a reciprocal lattice vector we will get the same energy so and this equation the uh, psi k plus g prime at position r is equal to psi k r it uh, it verifies that block waves whose wave vectors differ by a reciprocal lattice vector are identical are identical So, okay, now in 10 minutes, uh, all of you have studied this Cronin Penny model at graduation level, most of you, except the integrated students, five year integrated students. Yes. All of you? Yes? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hmm. Yes, sir. Yep. So, let me quickly go through this Cronin Penny model so that it would be a revision for, for you in the remaining time. We saw the shape of the potential around the ion. It was having a hyperbola shape because it is of the form of E square upon R. So what 
these scientists Croning and Penny did, they considered that period that uh, hyperbolic potential, which was of the form of e square upon r, to be in the form of rectangles to be in the form of rectangular so that we can apply we can say that particle in a one dimensional box so there are uh, there are rectangles there are rectangles which uh, define the negative potential negative potential at each ionic site and in between the ions we have a potential barrier so potential wells are separated by potential potential barriers so this is what they consider that this hyperbolic variation of the potential or potential energy can be considered in the form of they can be roughly considered to be of the form of a rectangle or if we have such thing that we have well separated by potential barrier whose thickness is given by this this b and uh, this distance is uh, the length of the barrier is potential well is a so, so therefore from the origin barrier plus well distance is a plus b so this total distance is a plus b after this distance everything gets repeated you see you this is origin we have one well one potential barrier and after this distance a plus b everything gets repeated we have well potential again well potential so this is the periodicity the periodicity is a plus b for this we apply schrodinger equation uh, time independent schrodinger equation n minus h cross square by 2m del 2 psi upon dx square plus ux psi is equal to e psi and we solve it for different regions one is between zero and a inside the potential well where the potential is uh, u is equal to zero and therefore this equation would be d square psi or dx square plus 2m upon h cross square e psi is equal to zero we will we will have mathematics so you will enjoy it if you do it by yourself otherwise there is no meaning and uh, then we have potential barrier, potential barrier uh, between minus b to zero. And here the height of the potential barrier is u naught. Therefore, Schrodinger equation would be d square psi upon dx square plus 2m upon h cross square e minus u naught psi is equal to psi is equal to zero. Now, what we are considering here is that the energy of the electron in the potential in the potential well is smaller than this u naught, smaller than this potential barrier height. So we consider E smaller than u naught, and when when we define certain we certain things, alpha square is equal to 2 m e upon h cross square, and beta square is equal to 2 m u naught minus e upon h cross square Re recall here here we have e minus u naught but here we have defined beta square as 2m u naught minus e upon h square therefore we will have negative term here the two equations will be d square psi upon dx square plus alpha square psi is equal to zero and d square psi upon dx square minus beta square psi is equal to zero between these regions since our potential is periodic, the wave function must be of the form of block wave function. So we write psi x is equal to e to the power, uh, e to the power i k x u k x, where u x has the periodicity of this. And now, in this case, the potential plus potential potential well plus potential barrier, they get they get repeated after a distance of a plus b. Therefore, u k x will have periodicity given by u k x plus a plus b if we substitute this wave function in the schrodinger equation or first we need to do we need to get these values so we differentiate it d psi over dx we will get i k e to the power i k x u k x plus 
e to the power i k x d u k x upon d x. Similarly, we will get second derivative of this, and we substitute we substitute psi x and uh, d to uh, its second derivative in equation in these equations. So when we substitute, we get these equations d to u one upon d x square plus two i k d u one upon d x plus alpha square minus k square u one is equal to zero, and the second equation would be like this. U one and u two represent the values of u k x in the intervals between zero and a and minus b and zero. These are two second order differential equations whose solutions will be given by u one is equal u one is equal to a e to the power iota alpha minus k x plus beta b e to the power minus iota alpha plus k x and similarly the solution for u two a b c d are constants which can be determined from the following conditions now we need to apply certain boundary conditions that at x is equal to 0 u1 and u2 value should be same and their first derivative because it is a schrodinger wave function it must be continuous it should not be discontinuous there for u1 and u2 should be equal to 0 and their first derivative should be should also be equal Similarly, u1 at a and u2 at minus b they should be equal, and their first derivative should be equal. This equation corresponds to the requirement that the wave function psi and its first derivative, and hence u and dux must be continu continuous. These are the requirement for any wave function to be. to be called as a schrodinger wave function that the wave function and its first derivative should be continuous whereas the this equation number 14 satisfies the requirement of the periodicity of u k x now if we apply these uh, equations 13 and 14 in equation number 11 and 12 we will get these four equations i am not going to Read them. So these equations are written here. Again, we have four equations in four coefficients. Therefore, in order to solve them, we will make a matrix. Matrix, and we will put that equal to zero. So this matrix would be like this, which on solving will give us this equation: beta square plus alpha, alpha square uh, upon two beta alpha hyperbolic sine beta b sine alpha a plus Hyperbolic cos beta b cos alpha is equal to cos k a plus b. We have to solve this equation and we have to simplify it. So, what Kronig and Penny did in order to solve this equation, they first considered the potential barrier height tends to infinity and uh, b tends to zero. Yeah, means. जो पोटेंशियल बैरियर है उसकी हाइट तो इन्फिनिटी हो रही है और उसकी जो विथ है वो दैट टेंस टू जीरो बट देयर प्रोडक्ट यू नॉट बी रिमेन्स फाइनाइट दैट इज द पोटेंशियल बैरियर बिकम्स डेल्टा फंक्शन अंडर दिस सरकमस्टांसिस द मॉडल इज मॉडिफाइड टू वन ऑफ ए सीरीज ऑफ वेल्स सेपरेटेड बाय Infinitely thin potential barrier. This quantity u naught into b for u u naught tends to infinity, b tends to infinity is known as the barrier strength. When b tends to zero, hyperbolic beta b is equal to beta b, and hyperbolic cos beta b will be equal to one. And we have already defined. beta square and alpha square if we calculate beta square upon alpha square divide by 2 alpha beta uh, 2 alpha beta we will get m u not divide by alpha beta h cross square therefore this equation this 16 equation equation number 16 becomes m u not b 
upon h cross square alpha sin alpha a plus cos alpha a in, is equal to cos k a. I will take two or three minutes, so please uh, be attentive. Not more than two minutes, and only two slides are left. So, this is kind of a transcendental equation. We need to plot cos k, we need to plot uh, cos k that is on the right side. We also need to plot the left hand side. Cos k can have maximum value and minimum value between plus one and minus one. So, we plot it cos k, it can have maximum value this plus one and minimum value minus one. And when we plot the left hand side for any particular value of p, here in this case p is equal to 3, uh, 3 pi by 2, so we will get these curves. Only those values are allowed which lies between plus 1 and minus 1, because only then in that case the condition would be satisfied. So we see that here, the red lines that represent the allowed values and these values are not allowed because they are lying above plus one and minus one therefore these are not allowed so we will have allowed energy values separated by separated by not allowed values so we have allowed values not allowed values allowed values not allowed values this is what we observe in nearly fit electron model we have one band second band separated by a forbidden gap, third band separated from second band by a forbidden energy gap. Similarly, here we are getting allowed band, not allowed band, allowed band, not allowed band, allowed band like this. And if we plot E as a function of uh, Ka or K, we are going to get the same type of, uh, uh, same type of energy gap at the at the zone boundary. This is what we observe in the nearly free electron model. So let me quickly finish it. The energy spectrum of the electrons consists of alternate regions of allowed energy bands allowed energy bands are shown by red lines and these are separated from the forbidden energy bands forbidden energy bands which are, which are not allowed which are not allowed the width of the allowed allowed band increases with the increase in the value of alpha a or e the width of a particular allowed energy band decreases with the increase in the value of p that is with the increase in the binding energy of the electron if p tends to infinity allowed energy bands are compressed into energy levels we have bands but if p tends to infinity allowed bands are compressed into energy levels like we have energy levels in atom in that case, we have the equation E is equal to, under this circumstances, E is equal to pi square, n square, h cross square upon 2m square. This is nothing but the energy of electron in one dimensional box. In that case, we have only energy levels, not band. So whenever, the, whenever this P tends to infinity, we will have only one potential well and the energy bands gets com get compressed into energy levels and uh, if p tends to zero then we will have energy that is the energy of a free electron h cross square k square by 2m we will have continuous energy levels that corresponds to a free electron so we can plot it energy as a function of p when p tends to infinity we have energy levels and when we we have p uh, p tends to zero here p tends to infinity means we have energy levels and when p tends to zero we have continuous energy bands and in between zero and infinity we have energy bands 
here the energy is continuous there is no break here we have bands which are separated by uh, forbidden gaps and here we have only the levels one level two level like this so this is all about the chronic penny model more you can uh, read from any book so with this i conclude today's lecture and uh, Uh, we will have the discussion on your assignment that is on tight binding model in uh, during the next week class.